All right, welcome to Geometry 6-4. We're learning about the volume of prisms and cylinders. And uh, before we go, I just wanted to write down with you what is the definition of volume. And volume is simply uh, the space that a figure occupies. So, sorry again if my stylus isn't that clean with my writing. The space that a figure occupies, I mean, we're talking about three-dimensional shapes, and so you're talking about the actual space that a figure occupies. Uh, and to illustrate this, I kind of showed the difference between first, second, and third dimension. In the first dimension, you might have, you know, a measuring tape measures one inch. It's a linear measurement, one axis. In the second dimension, you have two axes, meaning this might be one inch squared. One inch times one inch would be one inch squared. And note that we call this two, or raise the second power here, right? Uh, not to the second power, we call this squared. And that's because the area of measurement that we're using is a square. When we come down to three dimensions, what do we call this cubed? One inch, or this third ex, uh, exponent raised to the third power, is one inch cubed, because the unit of measurement that we're measuring with now is a cube. Extending this to two inches, just so you can see another example here, if this is two inches in first dimension, uh, in the second dimension we'd have two by two, or four inches squared. In third dimension, we have two by two, excuse me, two by two by two, which would be a total of eight inches cubed. So again, uh, volume is just the space that a figure occupies, and it will be measured uh, in cubic units. Let's move on. Cavalieri's principle, um, and I'm going to write this out with you guys, uh, it basically says that if two space figures, and then we'll talk about it, if two space figures have the same height and the same cross-sectionals, cross-sectional area, sorry, at every level, then they have the same volume. Forgive my handwriting. And let's look what's the same. If two space figures, so we could take these two right here, have the same height. Now, the height's not labeled here. I could do that real quick if you want. Um, we'll just use purple. Let's say the height of this is, is uh, 15 centimeters. And the height of this, since it's tilted, it would actually be running through the middle here. But let's say this is also 15 centimeters. If two figures have the same height and the same cross-section area at every level, now I've only illustrated one level, but you can see that this would be true for the whole thing. And that meaning, what is the area of this cross-section? Well, in this case, this area would be 3 times 2, or 6 centimeters squared. Uh, same here, this one would be 3 times the height, which is 2, you can see label, which is 6 centimeters squared. And even according to this third one, if the height was 15 here, uh, one half your base times height, this would also be 3, 1 half 6, times 2 is 6 centimeters squared. So they have the same height and the same cross-sectional area, then they have the same volume. So you could effectively say that all three of these space figures have the same volume. Moving on to just volume of a prism. So the volume of a prism, and I want to illustrate this again, is going to be the area of the base. So I've illustrated what the base looks like in these three things. So you have the area of the base, which we write is capital B. Uh, again, this means the area of the base. And you can imagine if I took the area of this base and I pulled it up through this whole figure, right, that I would, in essence, fill the space that this figure occupies. If I took this triangular base and I pulled it up through the whole figure, I would fill up the whole space that this this prism occupies. So, uh, and again here with this. So the total, how do you find the volume of a prism? Is the area of the base times the height. That's it. Let's look at an example how we find this. So if I need to find the volume of this figure, first let me illustrate what the base is. So the base, and I'll just do this slightly. Excuse me. Uh, so the area of our base, remember, this is the area of our base. And in this sense, since we're dealing with a rectangular prism, uh, the area is going to be the base times the height. 
So in this case, it would be 10 centimeters times 6 centimeters, which gives us uh, 60 centimeters squared. And then times the height, which in this case is 5. I'll just write over that, sorry. 5 centimeters. And you get the volume equals 300 centimeters cubed. Real simple. You just find the area of the base, and you multiply it by the height. That's it. What about the volume of a cylinder? Well, it's the same thing. It's just what is the area of our base? Well, the area of our base is a circle in this case. And so that area is going to be pi radius squared. Uh, in this case, our radius is 3. Uh, so volume is going to equal... We'll just square 3, so that's 9 pi times the height of 20. The volume would equal 180 pi. Um, and a, a rough multiplication of pi being 3.14 would give us 565.2. And what is our unit? Centimeters cubed, because we're talking about volume. So again, you just found the area of the base and you multiply that by the height, and there's the volume. That's it for today. Uh, good luck in the book work. Talk to you soon.